sensitive to the work of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord this morning. And uh, it's good to have Sister Whitney home. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> we, you know, we were just coming on board when she left to, to go to uh, Jackson or to Jackson, to Lufkin. And uh, we didn't like that, but but she has definitely is doing a great job and has come back and she's a blessing to us, isn't she? Amen. God bless Sister Whitney. Praise God. Turning your attention this morning to the book of Isaiah, the 64th chapter. So good to see all of our guests with us today. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's good to have Damon and his family with us back again. This is their third Sunday. Damon's third Sunday being here. So good to have them. God bless them. Praise God. Anybody else that we have visiting? Carlos, you're just a fixture around here now. It's good to have you in the house of God today. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I'm glad to be here today. And I'm glad that you're here today. But most of all, I'm glad that God's here today. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The book of Isaiah, the 64th chapter. We're going to begin reading in verse number one. And we, I know that we have gone a little bit later today in, in our worship than what we normally do, but that's okay. Amen. We don't have service tonight, so we can be here till one o'clock today. Amen. Praise God. I, don't, don't anybody get nervous. I know you've got pastor on speed call. You don't need to speed call him right now. Let him know. Brother Markatel is about to give us a heart stroke in here. You know, you know just kind of take it easy. You know, just, let's, let's just see where the spirit leads. How's that? The book of Isaiah, the 64th chapter, begin reading in verse number one. The word of God says, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. When the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things which we looked not far, thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eyes seen, O God, Beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Thou meetest him with, that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth. For we have sinned, and those is continuance, and we shall be saved. For we are all as an unclean thing, and our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we do all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up thyself to take hold on thee, for thou hast hid thy face from us, hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father, we are the clay, and thou our potter, and we are all the work of thy hands. I want to take your attention back to verse number 4. He said, for since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With the help and grace of the Lord this morning, just for a few moments, I want to preach to us. Will you help me preach to us today? Will you help me? Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's lift our hands and our hearts toward the Lord. Let's ask God to reach down and quicken us right now. Gracious God, I'm thankful today for your presence. I'm so thankful for your spirit that's in this place, God. I'm thankful today that we can call upon the greatest name, the name of Jesus. I'm thankful for people of God that have come into your house today. God, not just out of obligation, but we've come into your house today to worship you, to magnify you, to lift up your name. I'm asking right now that you would quicken our minds, quicken our hearts, anoint us today, and let us feel you like never before. In Jesus' name, let us be changed today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Praise God. 
I want to preach from this subject today. Platform for a miracle. A platform for a miracle. God bless you. You may be seated. You find that a miracle, according to Webster, is defined as an inter intervention in the natural universe by God. It's an intervention in the natural universe by God. Today, every one of us can sit back and we can cross our legs and we can talk about the different things that we've been through in 2019. We can talk about our ups and our downs. We can talk about the ins and the outs of 2019. We can begin to reminisce about the problems that we've had, the difficulties that we've had to face, the situations that was uh, less than to our liking. In other words, we had some problems this last year. And it seems as if problems have become a part of our everyday life. Everyone that you come in contact with, they can tell you about their problems. Uh, I think I've made mention here before, but uh, when we pastored in Macon, Georgia for 20 years there, there, there was this uh, lady that, that uh, often would come up and, and she, she always had some, some problems she needed to talk to you about. Matter of fact, you never ask her how she was feeling that day. If you did, you had to stand there for 20 minutes and you had to listen to all the, the aches and the pains and, and the problems that, that she had uh, at, at that moment. Can I tell you, the older I get, the more I begin to, to, begin to uh, realize that it wasn't just something that she was talking about. You know, it seems as if, uh, you know, you, you reach above 50, you know, you, you, you wake up every morning, you find out that you've got a new pain someplace. You know, there's either the knees, it's the hands, it's the, it's the head, it's the ears are aching, it's the toes that's aching, it's the feet that's aching. You, you'll know what I'm talking about when you reach the golden years. I don't know what they talk about this being golden for, but, but when we start reaching those golden years, you find that you wake up with new uh, pains every morning. But it seems as if everybody you come in contact with has a pain they want to talk about. They have a problem. They have a situation that, that they need God to take care of. Can I tell you today, in order for there ever to be a healing, there's got to be a sickness. In order for God to ever bring about a deliverance, there's got to be something that is bound. Hello? In order for God to take care of your situation that you're involved in, there's got to be a problem there at first. In other, before God can ever speak peace, be still to your storm, you've got to be in the middle of a storm sometime. Now, we don't like these. We don't like these situations. We don't like the storms. We don't like the problems. We don't like the, the sicknesses. We don't like the bands that, that have us bound up so often. We just want the miracles. We want the signs and we want the wonders. But you find that there's not many of us that want the problems or the situations that warrant a miracle. Let me tell you today that whatever situation that you're facing in your life, I've got a God that's here today that's able to take care of your situation. got to be something wrong in order for God to bring about the miraculous in your life. Well, you've, you're facing some situations that's wrong in your life right now. I've got a God that will bring about the supernatural in your life today. How do you know he'll do it, preacher? Because I've seen him do it too many times before. Hallelujah. There's people that sitting on the pews of of, of this church today, sitting on the chairs of, in this church today that could testify of things that God has done in their life. Uh, they could testify about the miraculous. Uh, they can testify about the supernatural where that God stepped in uh, and God made a way where there seemed to be no way. Where God spoke peace, uh, where it seemed there was no peace. You find that it was all a platform for God to work on. It was a platform for a miracle. You find in 2 Kings, the 5th chapter, the 10th chapter, the 10th verse, you find at the beginning of that 10th chapter 
The Bible talks about a man, the only chapter really in the Bible that talks about the man called Naaman. It tells us his credentials. It tells us that he was a captain of the host of the Syrian army. Wow, he, had, he was a man of statue. He was a big, big bad dude. You know, to, to be a captain of the Syrian army, he had, to, he had to weather many a storm. He had to fight many an enemy. He had, to, he had to be involved in a whole lot of battles. He was a, The Bible even says he was a great man. The Bible says he was an honorable man. But then it gives us five words. It says, but he was a leper. And it seemed as if everything that had been said about Naaman in the previous verse. All the good reputations that he came with, all the good credentials that that he had a part of his life, being a great man and being the captain and being an honorable man, it seemed as if all that was wiped out with the five words, but he was a leper. But he was a leper. But not only was he a leper, you find that that there was something about leprosy. And I, Brother, Brother Stan, a couple of weeks ago, made mention of this. Leprosy affected the nervous system of an individual's body. That's why so many times people couldn't feel pain in their body because the, the nervous system had been so affected and the damage had been done to their nervous system. In other words, they, they, they couldn't feel if, if they had some hot boiling water and it poured out on their skin the nervous system had killed or the leprosy had killed the, the nerves in that, in that hand to where they couldn't feel the heat of that boiling water. They couldn't feel the rats that would chew on their, their fingers or toes at night because the nervous system had been affected. And so you find that a lot of times we look at our situation and we say, God, just take the pain away. God, just take the pain away. What we're really really asking God to do is to remove the source of the pain. We're asking God to get rid of the very thing that may be keeping us uh, on our knees. Uh, Can I say today that without pain, we may may not be able to recognize uh, that something is wrong in our life. Uh, The leper did not even notice uh, that the rat was chewing on his finger or chewing on his toes uh, because he had no feeling uh, of the pain that was in his body. But can I preach to us today? I believe that we need to pray, God, uh, place me uh, in a place where that I can feel the pain to where that I know what is going on in my life. Hallelujah. Let me know, God, that pain may be your way of getting my attention. That pain may be your way of bringing me into a closer walk and a closer relationship with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've seen some people, the only time that they live for God is when adversity was in their life, when adverse conditions was there. Because you know why? Because there was something about those adverse conditions uh, that made them pray day by day. It made them fast week by week. It made, it brought them closer to God. Whatever it takes uh, in 2020 uh, for me to be close to God, I say, God, let me feel it. Let me be close to you because I've got to be saved. Can I tell this church something today? Pinehurst, there is nothing more important this year or this next year as we're going into it. There's nothing more important than being right with God. There's nothing more important than being on our face before God. There's nothing more important than walking with God and having a relationship with Him. Sometimes, sometimes, We've got to have the pain and be able to feel the pain. For you see, it was just a platform for a miracle. God has you where you are. Just like he had that little handmaid. That that, that little girl that had been brought back from a, from a raid that the Syrians had done down in Israel and brought that little Israelite girl back. 
And Naaman and his wife took her as being a handmaid in their house, a servant in their house. And everybody was saying, oh, poor little girl. But God was saying, no, I placed her there for a reason. I've got her there because I'm going to perform a miracle through her. Oh, and the Bible says when she heard that Naaman was a leper, she told her 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 her, her, her uh, Sir, uh, uh, master, thank you. I'm glad somebody helped me. She told her master, she said, oh, if somebody, if somehow Naaman could just get down to the house of Israel, there's a prophet down there, there's a man of God down there that he would recover him or he would heal him of his leprosy. Can I preach to you today that thank God that God God placed her where he placed her. The king was a platform. Naaman was a platform. The leprosy was a platform. The handmaiden from Israel was just a platform for a miracle that God wanted to do. So what we've got to do today is we've got to recognize that everything that comes our way is not meant to destroy us. It could be meant to make us. Hallelujah. You find in Luke the fifth chapter. You find where that Jesus has been. been uh, or he, he, he comes out and he tells the, the Simon Peter. He said launch out into the deep. He gets inside the, inside the boat and says launch out a little from the land. And they launch out a little from the land. The Bible says he sits down and he teaches the multitude from the ship. And then finally, as soon as he had finished speaking, the Bible talks about how that he looked at Simon and said, launch out into the deep and let down your net. Your net's for a draught. And Simon said, Master, we've toiled all the night long. We've toiled all the night and we've taken nothing. We, we, we've been fishing this lake for years. We, we've hit all the hot spots. We, we've gone all to, uh, to all the fish beds that we knew, all the places that we had baited. Uh, uh, we, we, we've gone there trying to find fish, but there's no fish there. Jesus said, let down the net. And Simon Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And they enclosed such a great multitude of fish that the, that the Bible says that their net began to break. Jesus had told them to let down the nets, but he had only let down a net. Can I tell you today that the sea was a platform? The boat was a platform. The nets were a platform. The fishermen were a platform. The empty fishing holes was just a platform for a miracle of what God was able to do. I want you to look at your situation that you're involved in right now and recognize it as only being a platform for what God really wants to do in your life. I want you to go out of 2019 looking forward to 2020 saying, God, whatever it takes to perform Form the miracles and the signs and the wonders. I want it to be a platform for what you're about to do. It was just a platform that God worked with. But he found a little boy. He had been t teaching a long time that day. And the Bible talks about how that there were 5,000 men. And you begin to, to do the estimate of, of the women and the children that, a part, that was a part of that crowd that day. Some 20,000 people listened as Jesus taught the multitudes that day. But you find that the people were weary. They had no, nothing to eat. And you find that Jesus said, Find me something I can work with. Find me something I can work with. And all of a sudden they had one that brought back to him just a little lunch. It was five loaves and two fish. And they looked at it and said, Jesus, this is what we have found. But it's not much. It's not enough to feed the multitude. What they did not realize was little is much. If God is in it. I said little is much. 
if God is in it. It doesn't take a whole lot to be a platform for God to work on. Can I tell you today, I'm sure that they had found other lunches throughout the crowd, but they didn't find anybody that was willing to give up the lunch that they had. But they found a little boy with a little lunch that said, whatever Jesus wants to do with my lunch, he can do what he pleases with it. And the Bible says that he broke the bread and he broke the fish and he fed the multitude of five. 5,000 men plus the women and children and they still had 12 basketfuls left over. Can I tell you today that all that little boy's lunch was was just a platform that God could work on. I want to preach to somebody this morning. I'm closing. I want to preach to somebody this morning. Everything negative that you have experienced in this last year, God is working it out so it can be a platform for a miracle in your life. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. If there's somebody else that believes that with me this morning, why don't you stand to your feet and lift your hands and whatever has been bothering you and whatever has been besetting you and whatever it is that's been, whatever situation it's been uh, that you've been involved in that you'd like for God uh, to take care of, why don't you give it to him right now? Come on, uh, let it become a platform that he can use. Uh, let it be a platform for a miracle that God can use to make something beautiful in your life. Come on. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I've listened to people this last year. I've listened to them talk about their problems. Matter of fact, I think that sometimes this Facebook can become a, a curse, especially when you go and post all your, all your problems and my husband and I, or my wife and I, my kids and I, you know, we, we had a falling out today, and I'm not cooking for them tonight. And, you know, all, all that type of garbage, you know, need to leave off Facebook. Need to leave off Facebook. You know, you know my wife, my wife didn't cook my favorite supper tonight, so, so guess what? I'm... I'm going to get me a steak someplace and leaving her and the kids at home. You don't have to broadcast that garbage. Leave that stuff off. There's enough negative things going on in the world that it don't take you to, to post your negative stuff out there. Amen? You don't need to, don't need to post your negative stuff. Out there. If you're going to post anything, talk about how good God is. Talk, talk about how great God is. Talk about, Brother Patrick, talk about how that God woke you up at 2 o'clock in the morning and began to transform your mind and your heart and your spirit. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know, but there was something about three, three, four weeks ago that, and I don't mean to point him out this morning, just inspiration, and he put it out there, so it's his fault. If he didn't want you to know it, he wouldn't have told you about it. But he talked about how that, that God woke him up, I think it was 2 o'clock in the morning, just a couple weeks ago, and how that God transformed him. And you know what? I've seen a transformation in Brother Patrick. I've seen some of the things that he's supposed to the last. Everything's positive and upbeat and talks about how that, yeah, he might have had problems in his legs and he might have had problems in his feet, but how that God is still good and how that God's working it out and how that God's going to take care of it. That's what you need to pay. I remember in years gone by when we had when we had testimony service. How many of you are old enough that you remember testimony service? And people would stand up, devil's been after me all week long, bless his holy name. You didn't catch that, did you? Devil's been on my case all week long, bless his holy name. Yeah. We quit, we quit having testimony service. I was preaching between the North Pole and South Pole, California to be exact. Sacramento, I better not uh, bring it down too close there. California. And uh, a lady stood up and 
She testified one night, and they had testimony service every service. And uh, she stood up, and for 20 minutes, almost 20 minutes, she talked about how bad things were in her life. And I'm going, oh, my goodness, how is this service ever going to get off the ground now? She talked about how bad things were and how much pain she's having and how the doctor said this and the doctor said that. The pastor leaned over to me, and he said, Brother Mark and tell, do you know what KISS stands for? I said, you know, the first thing from my mind was KISS at the moment. You know, who wants a KISS? You know, we need God to kiss the earth right now. He said, KISS means keep it simple, stupid. I'm going, he didn't just say that from the pulpit, I mean from the platform. And then he gets to the pulpit and says, you know what, with some of your testimonies, you need to kiss it. Keep it simple, stupid. I'm going, oh, my God. He didn't say that from the pulpit. But then I realized what he was saying. You speak negative, you're going to become negative. The negative things that she was speaking brought the surface down from a high down to a low. It makes you feel less than accomplished. It makes you feel less than a conqueror. It makes you feel less than victorious. Oh, but come on. You give me a good word any day. You tell me how that God's been helping you make it through the day. You've been telling me how good God's been to you. You tell me how that God touched your body. How that God healed you when you say, how that God delivered you. How that God set you free. What we're going to do today is I want us to I want us to give everything to God that has beset us in this last year. I want us just to put it into our hand, speak into our hand and it's there and then raise it up to God and say, God, these things have beset me. But this year, this new year, I'm going into it with victory in my mind. I'm going into it with victory in my heart. I'm going to be an overcomer. I'm an overcomer by the words of my testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. God, you're going to make something beautiful out of some messes that I've made this year. You're going to, you're going to turn some situations around that, I, that the devil thought was going to destroy me. But God, you're going to turn it around and you're going to cause it to feed me. Oh, come on, let's give it to the Lord right now, can we? All across this congregation right now. You've had some situations that God is just making it a platform for a miracle in your life. He's going to do something beautiful in your life. He's going to do something beautiful in your life. Hallelujah. Why don't we step?